like I was saying, I'm Michael with Loudwater Outfitters. Uh, I'm the founder, owner, and really the way that I or the reason I do these is because it lets families tell their story, and then once we get it out there through followers and people sharing and things like that, then it, it turns around and it helps people to uh, hear the message. And if anybody knows something, they'll reach out, hopefully. Uh, so anything that we can do to help you, we'll be more than happy to do that. So without me talking a whole bunch, I'm just going to turn it over to you. Just start with your name and tell us your story. And my name is Candace Mullins. Um, I live in Texas and my aunt went missing. Uh, we're thinking somewhere around November of 2021. Um, she's dealt with schizophrenia her whole life, but she was medicated. Mm -hmm. um, she took medicine for over 20 years. Um, she took care of her mother. Uh, she's doing really well. She retired from Walmart. A good citizen, a good church lady, very good person. Um, so uh, from what I understand, she went off her medication. And um, adult protection was called several times, but nobody nobody could do anything. I'm not quite sure exactly what happened but um a few months later my grandmother's body was found in the house okay. and so um initially i think the police thought that my aunt may have had something to do with her death so in all the missing posts and things like that that they've put online like through crime stoppers they've named my aunt as a person of interest okay in an ongoing crime so i think that maybe that's why they haven't really looked for her i'm not sure mm -hmm. but uh She's not because my grandmother's autopsy just came back about a month ago and there's no foul play. Okay. So um, what's concerning to me is if she was off her medication, um, where could she have gone? Where would she, you know, cognitively have been able to think through things and, and be able to hide somewhere? I know she speaks Spanish. She was a missionary many years ago in Peru. So I thought maybe another country, maybe she could have done that. But um, she was dating someone. Um, uh, he denies dating her. Okay. Um, so, but I don't know. I just, I just fear that she's passed, or um, you know, maybe she's in a mental health hospital somewhere. I'm just not sure. It's just she's not used her bank account, her health insurance, nothing. It's just cold. Okay. Uh, did do you know if when she left, did she have a cell phone with her by chance? She had a cell phone, but she hadn't used it in a, several years. She's okay. more of an older woman, so she didn't really use cell phones. Okay. Now, so was she from Big Spring, Texas as well? Yes. All right. Now, how the only part of Texas I've ever been to is obviously Dallas and then uh, West Texas. So where, whereabouts is that in relation it's to the state? The, it's in it's, West Texas? Yeah, it's um, in between Lubbock and probably halfway between Lubbock and um, San Angelo. Okay. All right. So it's not super far away from uh, being near the border, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, and then I guess, so once, once she did go missing, um, did they try? Was there any, basically, what was the process that they took or what, is, what has law enforcement or anybody done up until this point as far as trying to locate her? Or, or have they... They've been very limited as far as the information will give me, I guess, because of the fact that she's been charged or, or is, is a person of interest. Mm -hmm. But they did check her bank account. And they said it hasn't been used in quite some time. What okay. that means, I'm not sure what quite some time means. Mm -hmm. um, I issued a missing persons report. Um, so that's been done. I did call the Texas Rangers and they said they were investigating a murder investigation, but that's all they would tell me. Yeah. And, and just, you know, so um, I've called her health insurance, um, things like that. There's just nothing, nothing that I can find. So. Was she, so obviously she was dealing with mental illness, but was she on a lot of medications or medications that she was having to take every day? You said she had just stopped all of that, correct? Yes. Okay. From what I understand, she must have stopped. I wasn't there to see you know, mm -hmm. what you know what was going on, but yeah, she must have just stopped. So, but when she left, did she have a vehicle with her, or did she take her off? Her, her, house. her car is at her house. Yes, it, I mean it wasn't working at the time either, from what I have been told. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, her car is at the house. I found a set of house keys at the house, but I'm not sure if those were my grandmother's or hers. Yes, ma'am. What well, is there anything? Like, I guess, obviously, and I ask this question because it sounds crazy sometimes, but people, family members usually, like, whatever their gut instinct is, you know, it's nine times out of ten pretty correct. 
Like, what, what, what are you feeling? Do you feel as though she has just went somewhere else? Do you feel as though maybe something has happened to her or not really sure or what? I feel like something has happened to her. I have hope that maybe she could have entered into a mental hospital, mm -hmm. um, you know, under just some kind of protection for mm -hmm. herself. Um, but I don't see her leaving her things behind. I don't see her leaving her mother behind. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't see that. So my, I suspect maybe the boyfriend, um, he was a lot younger and she did write a letter to my cousin yes. saying that he um, t took advantage of older women um, and stuff like that. So, I mean, I do suspect him, but I don't, I, I don't have any evidence for it. So yeah, no, I understand completely. Yeah, I uh, that's just what I'm trying to piece together because if she, you know, cause that, that becomes a whole, whole nother process. If she did, if she went into Mexico or she made it further South than that, you know, trying to, locate because that's the thing too there's been so many different stories that i've been looking at and reading or been a part of to where people thought that there's just absolutely no possible way and then there's like two to three different ones i think i just shared one out of texas where um no he was he was from arkansas and they thought that he had been deceased for i believe two years but he was down in texas the entire time and then there was another one where a lady had that suffered from mental illness in pennsylvania and she ended up she is kind of a similar story she was a missionary as well but she ended up being found in uh i think guatemala yeah. after 25 30 years but she was in, in, in a mental institution she had checked herself in for help like that so you just never know right i'm not trying to you know i don't ever try to give anybody false hope but i do try to give people hope that there is a possibility right you just never know until you know um what it what just trying to think as far as ways that we I could be able to help you out here. If you've already filed the missing persons report, uh, the have they asked for any kind of, do you think that her DNA in any way would be, is it in any kind of database? Did y'all ever do like an Ancestry.com or 23andMe, anything like that? No, we haven't, but I, I can try to do that. But um, when my grandmother passed, they said, <clears throat> they went to my cousin because they weren't sure if it was my grandmother's body or my aunt's body. So I know my cousin has submitted her DNA. Okay. And the reason I ask that too, because, um, so I'm from South Carolina, so the, they don't do familiar DNA. They're in the process of working on a case doing it now, but with that familiar DNA, um, all that is, is like, so 23 and me and all those ancestry databases, when people upload their DNA to that, they can use what's called familiar DNA and, uh, pull that. So if they come across a deceased body or a person that suffers really bad from Alzheimer's and they can't <laughs> notify them, they don't know their name, then they can look in, not necessarily into those databases, but kind of a conglomerate of all of those combined and see. That way, if it pops up anywhere, uh, no criminal history or nothing like that, no, never in and out of jail, nothing. nothing. Not, I mean, no, no drug addiction, no alcohol, no, I mean, just nothing. Just work every day, go to church, take care of a mom just a wonderful lady. I mean, other than, you know, just the mental illness issues she would have, but, mm -hmm. um, she was always, you know, I don't know. <laughs> that does make it, um, that does make it extremely difficult. Do you think that she would have any reason that she would want to harm herself? I don't see her wanting to harm herself, but when you're off your medication like that, um, you know, I just can't see maybe how she would organize even leaving, Definitely. you know, but, but because she speaks Spanish, I pray hopefully maybe she did find a way to just escape or leave, or maybe she saw a crime. Uh, you know, I, I, yeah. I don't know. Maybe there was something that happened that had her go somewhere. But there's no no criminal history as far as. Okay. And, and the reason I asked that, like I said, just to see, again, that kind of goes into that as well. Like some, some charges, people, like their fingerprints and things of that nature, they're there. I just want to. I'm trying to narrow down if there's any way possible if she is found and she, you know she gives a fake name or anything like that if she was to do something like that that maybe her fingerprints were on file somewhere something that would tie her back to where it would be like to notify because once you entered her missing or you did that missing persons report i'm sure they entered her or i would hope that they entered her into ncic um so that if anybody runs her name or birthday or social security number even if it's a partial match to all of her information then it'll show up immediately and notify whatever law enforcement agency that she's out with um that, that as far as the mental health aspect side of things i'll ask this just because sometimes it seems to be a little bit more 
if somebody suffers from Alzheimer's or dementia or like really young children, um, or if they're just in a real altered mind state, they are sometimes they are drawn more to water than anything. Is did she ever do anything like that? Did she enjoy going to the lake? Did she have a pond, a river, anything like that that she would frequent? No, she was really just a homebody. She she got into a wreck. 20 or so years ago on the interstate uh, as a passenger. And mm-hmm. so she didn't even really travel. I mean, just to get her to go to another town was very difficult. Yeah. So, I mean, she how, old, was, how old was she when she went missing? 64. 64? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that, uh, I don't know. That would, and this was last year. It was, it was almost two years ago, so it had been the winter of uh, 2021. Okay. And That's what you can tell, like, the last time that a neighbor had seen her. Now, their mate, she may, mm-hmm. the cops may know something as far as a bank account that may be a little bit later than that, but as far as what I can tell, just from a neighbor, that he saw, they saw her on Thanksgiving of 2020. Okay. Well, that's it, the minimum, like I said. Um, so we do, I mean, I do searches and things like that, too. It's just, obviously, I had to. The more information as far as narrowing it down to that last known location, and again, and I know sometimes law enforcement, they cooperate with us. Sometimes they cooperate with the family. Sometimes they don't want anything to do with that, um, right? And I know, and I understand some of it, maybe not necessarily all of it, because before I started doing this, I was an uh, investigator in law enforcement for 10 years. So yeah. that's um, that's kind of why I just try to help people now, because a lot of people don't feel like the, their cases or their loved ones' cases really even get looked at at all, right? Um, so and sometimes that's not the truth they do have different policies per departments and things like that I won't go into all that I'm sure you are well aware but it's it's a lot more difficult for some than others Um, Texas I really hadn't had too many issues with anything like that but the the problem with Texas is there's just so many missing people because there's so many people per capita you know so it's it's really hard for them to narrow anything down Um, and then plus being a border state I mean if you get across the border I mean it makes it that much more difficult but What I will do is, like I said, for now, I can offer to put this together, put the um, put her picture out there, put the flyers out there, and hopefully people hear your story, hear her story, and then they share this. And then uh, there's a couple different groups. Like, I think I would actually saw one of your posts for missing Americans in Mexico and things like that, uh, to where if we can get it into that and somebody can translate all this too or watch the subtitles for Spanish and you know, if they can get it pushed through there, then hopefully, hopefully we can find somebody that knows just a little bit of something, right? Because yeah. the uh, the bank records, obviously, they are important because it paints a trail of where they were, what they were doing. Um, and that's that's just the biggest thing. Last known location is huge. So uh, as soon as we get off here, I'll get all that edited up together and get it post it up probably within the next hour or so and then if you need anything at all if you can think of anything you make sure that you reach out to us is there anything else that you would like to say um if she for some if she ends up watching this or if somebody watching this knows what happened to him is there anything you'd like to say to them or anybody first of all i'd like to thank you so much for what you're doing and your time i really appreciate that but if, if she is out there and she does see this i just wanted to know that we love her and that, you know, no matter what may have happened, that we'll be there for her. Um, and um, it surely can't be too bad. <laughs> so we'll take care of her and just make sure she's safe. And just for her to get a hold of me, um, if she can, me or her daughter, and um, let us know where she's at and that she's safe. If she doesn't want to be contacted after that, we can let it be. But it's just please let us know that she's safe. Yes, ma'am. And that's that's my biggest hope, right? So between... After doing this, I, I hope and pray nothing more than that y'all can find some sort of answers, right? Best case scenario, she is, she's just somewhere she don't really want to be bothered, something like that. But as long as y'all can get the answers one way or another, that's all I care about, okay? So uh, if you hear anything, um, if you know anything else after that, anything at all that I could be able to help you with, just make sure to reach out to me, okay? Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you.